Hi, everyone. This is Mahabeli from the American University in Cairo. Um, and with me today, Tina is going to give us an activity, but I'll let Alex and Sarita introduce themselves, and then Tina can introduce herself and take it away. I'm Alex Fink. I'm at the University of Minnesota in our Youth Studies program in Minneapolis, Minnesota in the United States. Hi, I'm Sarita Shukla, and um, I am a lecturer at the School of Educational Studies. University of Washington, Bothell, um, again in the USA. And I'm Tina Pippen, and I teach religious studies and human rights at Agnes Scott College in Decatur, Georgia, USA. Okay, today we're going to do something embodied. Um, if you have your camera off, if you're not comfortable doing it, I invite you to do it in whatever way you feel comfortable with as much of your body as you feel comfortable. The game we're going to play is adapted by Teresa Ronquillo from Augusto Boal, um, Games for Actors and Non-Actors. Uh, and it is called Opposites, I think. At least that's the name I'm giving it. So I'm inviting you into this space um, to wave. Now, hug yourself. Give yourself a big hug which we all need this time of day, right? So wave and hug, okay? So now I would like you to um, make yourself as big as possible in the screen, whichever way, with your hands or your whole body. Okay, now make yourself as small as possible. Okay, one more, big as possible and small as possible. Okay, that gets the heart rate going. Okay, the last um, duo we're gonna do is I want you to wiggle or shake and stop. Wiggle, shake and stop. Okay, now that we've got these duos down, I'm in, inviting you to do the opposite and I'm gonna call it out. And um, if we're silly, that's, that's the good thing, right? Says Boal. So if I say wave, you hug. If I say hug, you wave. If I say small, you're big, big, you're small, wiggle, shake, you stop, stop, you wiggle, shake. Okay, are we clear? And do that to the best of your ability. Um, get your heart rate up is, is, is a good thing. Okay, um, small, big. Stop. Wiggle shake. Hug yourself. Wave. Okay, and we could keep going from there. You do it several rounds. Um, people are messing up. It's fun. There's laughter. And if the cameras are off, that's fine. You know, they're doing it on their own. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yeah. That. So, thank you. I think it is very energizing, and again, it focuses your mind while getting your body going. Uh, yeah. So I can see yeah. it being like a good. It's a welcome way to break your zoom zooming activity throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And if someone's camera is off and they're still moving, it's still good for them, even though we can't see the silliness of it. We were actually pretty good. Like usually, people mess this up a lot more than we did. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's easier to mess it up in the Bawal in person on your feet version of it too. Uh, yeah, you said in person that it would involve moving around the room a lot more and you can bump into each other, I guess, which would be so cool. Yeah. You know what would be cool also is to ask students to come up with duos. So it's not just the professor who's doing the duos, but maybe students or different students calling out what to do. And I think what would make us mess up more, Tina, is if you didn't do anything. If you said, but yeah, you didn't do it. That's right. If I was just the joker and leading it without participating. Yeah. yeah. Joker is a term that Boal uses, right, for the character in, in Theater of the Oppressed who's encouraging people to do things, but is not actually an actor or a spectator, right? Sometimes. Okay. Uh, he calls it the difficult actor. Ah, huh, okay. Yeah, it's a it trick. sort of challenging. Yeah. Yeah, cool. It's a really hard role to take. Yeah, but I did it because I needed to 
do something embodied to wake up and focus. So I selfishly put myself into the game. Now with students, I, I would show at the beginning and then let them do it so I could watch. Um, there'd be that, because uh, I'd have at least two screens to deal with, so. Right, right. And you were saying one of the issues you had is if students are dropping out because of connectivity issues, that kind of gets in the way. So if you're not, if you're not having to be the, the joker, then that would be okay because you'll take care of that and let the students lead the yeah, activity. Yeah, right? we admit people a lot, often, yeah. into, back into the space. Yeah. yeah. Alex and Sarita, do you have any comments before we go? Well, I, I love the idea. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a wonderful, simple activity that does not take too much of prep work um, on your part and not too much of, you know, here's how we are going to do it. Um, and, and so it can be done at any time as an intro activity, but more importantly, there's something satisfying about doing something that, you know, you're being told and you're doing something opposite of that. I guess it's, it makes it more fun um, in, in a kind of way. And especially I'm thinking for like younger children, if you're a teacher of young children, um, it's, it's um, rather than, you know, like the Simon Says activity, this is quite the opposite of that, right? So it was a whole lot of fun just doing something opposite of what's being told. Um, so it, it was pretty neat. Um, but I think in, in, um, in, in a Zoom session, I love the idea of letting students um, provide some duos as well. And then maybe doing it consistently every single time that we have class. Like, okay, let's take a break. Let's do this dual activity. Um, and, and I think that, you know, inviting students to take the lead um, rather than you being in charge at all times, it, it, it changes the dynamics. And um, so that's, that's wonderful. I love what you just said there. One of them, obviously the idea of resistance or questioning authority, which I think is in itself valuable and, and you could reflect with your students on what that means. Uh, I know that some people, their idea of rebellion is to also do the opposite of what authority says, even if the authority is a good one <laughs> and saying the, a useful thing. Um, but I also love this idea of making it a regular thing that students then think about, oh, next week I'm the one or next class I'm the one who's going to come up with, let's come up with an interesting duo that's more confusing. But then maybe we keep all the old duos, right? So that we all have to remember what the two duos were and we remind ourselves and then, you know, someone's playing around with all of them. I love it. Mm -hmm. Alex, do you have any comments before we leave? Just that I suspect you could probably do a non-visual version of this with, um, I mean, one, I guess everybody could do the actions. It's a little less fun if you can't see each other. Um, but the other might be that you could probably have like a callback um, through uh, words. Um, so that if, if you say a word, you start out with everybody repeating the same word back to you, and then you invert it in the pair um, and do the same thing. I feel like I've done that in person with this kind of activity and imagine that that could work online as well. It would depend on the video conferencing tool because some video conferencing tool allow the cacophony of voices to come up at the same time. I think Zoom doesn't. Not really. I think yeah. Zoom, if you've, if you've ever tried singing happy birthday on Zoom, it's awful but um but i i get the i get the value of trying to do that so we should see which tools allow it and use it when the tool does allow it i think google hangouts or google meet would allow that um all the people speaking at the same time could be interesting too mm -hmm. or it could be done in smaller groups of three or four rather than the entire class i guess yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna end this video.